Hi, I'm Janine Louise and I'm a medium. Please join me on the online prosperity show with Prosper coming soon. And I'm going to talk to you about my perspective and my view on being a medium and being psychic. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got Janine, the spirit medium herself. How are you today, my love? I'm really well, Prosper. I'm really well. Fantastic. Now, viewers, you might be watching this show and anticipating that we're going to be, um, you know, reading your palms or we're going to be telling you the course of the future. But I might want to tell you that that may not be the case. All right. So you might be, um, you know, starting your business or you might be going through something, maybe a relationship bind. You know, we've all been there and you're anxiously awaiting something to happen, you know, between you and your partner or you and your clients. But, you know, you need to help, you, you, you're going to seek some help navigating through that and you decide to speak to a psychic or somebody who um, might have intuition or intuitive knowledge, um, you know, be, be beyond that we know as, as humans. That would be great. Not a problem. Sometimes you really need to know what you need, first of all, before you go to a, a psychic and you need to know what your path should be and you need to know um, what you're actually anticipating and what outcome you're going to be getting. So that's the reason why we brought in Janine. She's been telling me and educating me about her process, but I think it's very, very profound and we need to figure out, you know, sometimes you might get in a bind and, you know, you might think that uh, the, the, the natural knowledge that we have might not be enough. Maybe you need to speak to a psychic. Now, Janine, tell us a little bit about your story and how this actually started with you. Did you just wake up one day and you were psychic or something happened in your life that made you realize you were one? Uh, no, <laughs> it, took a, it, it took a really, really long time, uh, I guess, to figure out what was happening. Um, really long story short, as a young child, I used to have these reoccurring dreams up until the age of 11 or 12. Um, and this reoccurring dream was, and I can still remember it distinctively even today. Uh, there was a, a, I was always really afraid of the dark. I was scared to be on my own. I always felt like there was people in the room or somebody watching me. And of course, back then I, it was, you know, people just used to, you know, you're afraid of the dark. You're just scared. You're, it was, it was nothing, um, out of the ordinary of what a young child would probably experience. Um, but when I was about 11, I had this really profound experience where, uh, I was laying in my bed and um, I used to sleep with my sister in the same room as her. And I woke up about three o'clock in the morning. And I know that distinctively because my sister had an alarm clock that just used to light up the room so I could see the numbers on the clock. And I actually felt my bed move um, and hit the wall back. And I, I kind of was like, oh, my God, I must be dreaming. And I, was, I really had to get up in the middle of the night and go and use the bathroom. And I was petrified to do that. So I, I, I got up. I made my way and as I went to go to the bathroom I saw this really dark figure in front of me with a really tall top hat on and of course I didn't even make it to the bathroom because I panicked and I went back to my room jumped in bed with my sister and fell asleep I woke up the next morning feeling quite unwell because I was I hadn't gone to the toilet and I had um I hadn't slept and so when I got out my dad had said to me are you okay and I said to him you know no dad and he he said to me, what happened? And I, I told him, I said, you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. And I told him about this dark man that I'd seen. And what was really interesting about that conversation was dad had said to me, well, I know who that is that happened to me. Now, that was a conversation that I never thought of until later then on in life. And so as time passed, um, seeing psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors because I was hearing voices and feeling things and I was very emotional and I didn't know what was going on. So I literally thought I had mental health issues. Um, but as I reached my late twenties, um, as I was in going into my twenties, the, the more experiences I was having still really unaware until I really hit rock bottom. And once I hit rock bottom and I literally couldn't function, I was taken, uh, into, uh, a lady in the mountains and she explained to me what was going on and she said to me you you don't have mental health issues she said 
you actually have an ability and that ability is sending you a little bit crazy because you don't know how to deal with it. So once I left there, I kind of felt like I was in my own skin. I had this big understanding of what was happening. And instead of it being about my mental health, I then started to draw on, oh, my God, I, this must be something that's really real. So I then started to have conversation with my dad again. And um, it was when dad really got sick uh, and I could see things and I was seeing how, you know, what, like I knew he was sick before he was sick. I knew that he wasn't going to be here very long on this earth. There was all of these things that were coming. And as I was seeing them, they were actually coming to fruition. So in that, I started to develop my intuition more. And I, I used to own a salon. So I was, I was started to read in the salon and, and I was, um, I became quite busy and I, I, the more I read, the more accurate I became and the more confident I became in reading. So I then started to decide to go, okay, well, if I've got this and this is what it is, I need to utilize this in the best way that I can. So I then decided that because I'd been through the depression and I had the breakdown and I pulled myself out of that with no medication and I really worked on the development side of who I was spiritually, emotionally, mentally and physically, that's when I decided to start putting tools together. So I went back, I went to my husband uh, after my dad passed away, it was actually dad who I was still quite skeptical at that point, but dad had appeared to me after he passed away and he told me he would. And I thought it was an illusion at first, but it was so real and I've never seen anything like it since that day. But that was the day that convinced me that what I had was very profound and very real. And so I went to my husband, I said, I'm selling the cell and I'm going off to be a medium. And that's exactly what I did. And I've never looked back. And so I utilize my readings, not because it is a connection with just loved ones who have come through or my psychic side when it comes through to promote, you know, a new car or a new boyfriend or going overseas, or you're going to have a great job. I utilize that part of it to help develop these people because that's why they come to me. It's not just about, uh, it's not just about them, me giving the message. There's, there's more involved in it. So that's how I came, that's how it come about. And it took me a really, really long time to enter the public realm of it. And it was really difficult to tell people that I had this ability. It, it was not an easy transition, I can tell you. So no, it wasn't like one day I just woke up. What was really interesting is I never told my boys about this dark man that I saw and both of my boys at the age 11 had the same experience. So obviously that's our guardian somewhere along the line. So my boys are quite intuitive as well. Great stuff. All right. So thank you so much for, for that part of your um, history there. It, it, it must have been very um, confusing as a young person first of all not understanding what's going on and pretty much not having the support because if the people around you knew they would have taken you first of all somewhere that you know that wasn't maybe where you were taken in as to a psychiatrist and you know further feathering your depression there um when you then started telling people what sort of reactions did they have around you first of all as a person and second of all your newly found um persona uh it, the people withdrew they, they withdrew quite quickly um that's what i mean it wasn't an easy transition uh the people that i had around me kind of started to freak out because remember they automatically put me under this umbrella that society has this perception of so that was really challenging, including my husband. He he really freaked out. He was like, you know, how, how can you go from being a hairdresser to being a medium? People are going to think I'm married to a psych a psycho because he had that same perception. And so for me, it was, for me, the choice I made was this is who I am. And I, the only way for me to live contently and balanced in my life was to stand in my truth. So if it meant that those people became a loss in my life, then so be it. And and that's literally how it was. And and my husband was one of those. We, we did, we separated for a period of time um, because I just stood in my truth about it. I, it was who I was. So I, I was either going to change back to who I was and was going to be unstable and unhappy and miserable and consistently battling mental health, or I was just going to stand in my truth and be who I truly 
wanted to be and needed to be, I think, at that point. And so I just accepted that whoever was going to be in my life was meant to be there. Whoever was not meant to be there was not meant to be there. And I learned to accept it. It was challenging, but people did freak out. They took a step back and they still do today. Understandable. <laughs> Understandable. So what sort of lessons can one draw out of that? Because when you're trying to become and be and do all the things that were really uh, carved out for yourself to be, there would be a lot of these challenges, family, circumstances, um, uh, your society, and those that are around you might resist your true calling. What sort of advice can you put out there for somebody who was in the same shoes as yours and you finally broke through and now you are who you are? I think one of the biggest things that I used to worry about a lot was what people thought of me, what other people thought. Uh, today, I don't care about that. The, 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 the only time that that comes into my voc vocabulary is if that person is very warranted in my life. Those people around me, their words, their advice, what they speak, that means something. Outside of that, it doesn't bother me anymore. I, I believe, through my experience, everybody has an authentic self. So we look at, there are lots of mentors that we look at. There are lots of inspirational people that are out there. So we like to listen to them and we like to follow them. What I love about these people who have been successful in inspiring others is they don't make them or teach them to work under their umbrella. They give them the tools and they push those people to go on in their own journey and live in their authentic self. So for me, the biggest lesson that I have learned is to always stand in your authenticity regardless but your authenticity to yourself must be about what you know and what you believe to be in you, not what you think others want to see in you or want to believe in you for you to make that stance. Do you, do you understand what I mean? So yeah. for example, you know, if I'm going for a job interview, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be me in my authentic self. I'm not going to put something together that's going to impress them because that's going to change me as an authentic person, if that's not going to be on a consistent basis. So the biggest thing is just to be standing your truth, have your voice. And when I say have your voice, have your voice in a way where it is not demeaning or not through anger, but to have a voice in inspiration uh, and definitely th just standing in, in be authentic in who you are. Understandable. Great stuff. So you, you do refer to having a voice a lot of which, um, you know, you as a medium, you, first of all, you speak in your own authentic voice and then maybe you're channeling through um, some other voice that is not you. As a normal business person or as a normal individual, we also do have voices that we get to listen to, especially your intuition you know the one that really tells you where to go and how to direct that now what sort of ways would you help people to maybe tap into that and 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 start really listening to the voice that actually is a voice of reason instead of them you know fighting their monkey brain as they call it um which which you know takes them away from the path to to their glory or to their own success is there any sort of methods that you use to sit down and really listen or is there something that you can advise somebody so they can maybe learn to listen not become a medium but just okay. <laughs> be intuitive and sort of understand their inner voice we all have an instinct it's naturally born. It's naturally in us. We, we have a natural born instinct. We are automatically born with empathy. What clouds us is our conditioning. So we are, um, so for example, if we look at you, for example, where you, there's this saying that I, I absolutely love. It was on Smurfs too, believe it or not. Whoever wrote that piece was just phenomenal. And Papa Smurf said about, <laughs> about, um, uh, one of the characters in there 
was it doesn't matter where you come from, what matters is who you choose to be. And so that was a really beautiful statement and I and I use that consistently. So whoever wrote that piece for Papa Smurf was brilliant. So the thing about that is, is that most of the confliction that we have is about our conditioning. So whether it's a cultural conditioning, whether it's social conditioning, whether it is childhood upbringing, is basically our conditioning. So if I was to, when I read for somebody, my conscious mind, it falls away. What I see as being literal, it, it just, it falls away. That's how I allow all the judgment, all my thoughts, all my feelings, all what I perceive to be gone so I can interpret that message. So for somebody like you who wants to use your intuition, a lot of the conflict we have is we get this and then we go, oh my God, no, I can't, I can't go that way because, you know, I was taught that you've got to save first and you've got to do this and you shouldn't go and get a loan or so, so our conditioning and what we're thought or what we perceive as people seeing us in, it gives us all of these crosses and X's. So we tend not to move forward with it. But if we were to be able to drop our conscious thought and we would be able to listen to what was speaking from within us and we wrote that down and we just move forward with that without having that contemplation of should I, shouldn't I, because then you're going to go into procrastination. That's how you listen. It's about dropping the conditioning. It's about dropping the conscious thought. And it's about trusting. The key word is trusting what it is that you're getting in that instant. So we don't second guess it. So, for example, you might sit down and you might go, you might be doing something and all of a sudden you get this thought in and it's like, my God, I've got to write that down. That's a brilliant idea. And then you start looking and you get excited about it, but then you consciously go, well, I can't afford that. I haven't got time for it. How am I going to tell my wife that I want to go and do this? Blah, 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 blah. And then you put all these negatives on it. So instead of doing that, look at that conscious thought and go, why am I procrastinating? Instead of going, why I can't do it, look at how I can. Where is the movement towards achieving this goal that I want? So trusting that very first thought, feeling, sight, the vision that you see you going into, because we do, we get that vision of, I can see myself doing that. That's your instinct. That's your intuition talking. But the intuition gets clouded through conditioning or social conditioning or cultural conditioning. So letting go of that and letting go of what people think and see about us or what we do not to accommodate others, if you pull that back into who you are, you will actually move forward with really what you want. Thank you so much for that. That was really profound because half the time people stop themselves dead in their tracks just because of the conditioning that um, they might have and not realize that it's them that is actually stopping uh, you know, themselves from moving forward. So somebody might be sitting in the audience right now watching this show, uh, Janine, and really um, you know, getting engaged and now wants to figure out how can they best be helped just in case they stumble upon your website or your Facebook. What sort of, how do you help people? What, what, what stuff would you help them with? And, you know, um, well, what would you want them to prepare when they come to, to work with you? Well, that would depend on what it is they're coming to me for. for. If, if we were doing a, a reading, if we were doing a mediumship reading, there is nothing that they have to prepare. That's just them coming and sitting because obviously I trust what I get, um, whatever is delivered to me from wherever it comes from, I trust that. So that's what I deliver. So when, when they're coming for a reading, they don't have to bring anything. Sometimes people like to bring something that belongs to a family member. It might be an item or a piece of clothing or a piece of jewellery or a photo that they may want to bring. If, if they want to bring that, they can, but I don't require anything. If we were working in self-development, the one thing that, and we were, we were doing sessions in the transitional energy consultation, so shifting your vibration, shifting your thoughts, shifting your emotions, right. that would really be coming with an open mind with a piece of paper and, or a pad and a pen. And that's it. And comfortable clothes. And we then move forward to the exercises from there. So there is really not a lot that you need to bring with you. It's the action that's taken after that is the most important steps. Um, so it's the, 
you know, when you made that pledge, you made a pledge to find somebody that inspired you in your life that had an impact. Right. When we go into self-development work, we pledge to ourselves that we're going to do this. We make that promise to ourselves. And so it's the action behind that pledge to ourselves that's going to help us get to where we need to get to if we want to live in a better space. Understandable. So just in case somebody's watching this right now and is so eager to get a hold of you, what's the best way that people can be in touch with you there, Janine? Oh, look, there's lots of places they can call me or message me on my mobile. I have my mobile number sprawled over everywhere. Um, to my Facebook page, you can inbox me on either three of the pages that I have there. You can uh, go through the subscription on my website. Um, you can email me. You can contact me any which way. It doesn't matter. Facebook is fine. However you want to get in contact with me is fine. I'll, I'll see it somewhere. Either I will or the girls in the office will. So <laughs> someone will find it. Great stuff. Now, just one other thing, because obviously there's a lot of emotion involved in this. Can somebody just go into psychic reading on a whim? You know, should they not prepare themselves emotionally or spiritually for what they're going to discover and then find all the truths that are going to be spoken off of them, um, you know, during the session? Um, one of the things that they probably are best off preparing themselves is to have no expectation, to not have an expectation about what the outcome of the reading is going to be. That's the first thing. The second thing is about choosing the right person to go to. So being very mindful about who you choose because this job, this, this job that I have, because this is my life job, this is not something that I take lightly. I affect and change people's lives. What comes out of my mouth during that reading can effectively uh, alter somebody's thinking, alter their emotions. Um, it can shift them. It can hold them in a space. So the reader that you choose has to be extremely important. Be, be very wary of that because you can go in and you can have a reading of someone who, you know, may, you know, could be at a fair or something and I'm not saying that they're all wrong but the ones that are not in this full time or the ones that are not educating themselves in the delivery of what comes out of their mouth that's very 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 important you can go and you can have a reading and somebody will just say what they think they're supposed to say and that can hold into somebody's head they can interpret that and hold on to it for example I remember going to a fundraiser, uh, a cancer fundraiser. And of course I didn't read at the fundraiser because I was there as a support network for others, but there was a group of readers there and there was a lady that came out of one of the readings and I'd overheard a part of the reading and the lady was bawling her eyes out. And I overheard the reader tell this client that where she was in that fundraiser would eventually be for the person sitting in front of her. So, so she basically told this lady that the fundraiser would be for her eventually that she would have breast cancer and she needed to be careful of that. Now, mm -hmm. see, that is something that then stuck in that lady's head and she then walked away from that reading going, that's it, I'm going to get breast cancer. I'm dying. That's it. I'm going to eventually. So this is the kind of stuff that comes out of people's mouths. So the very first thing, even before you go in with an open mind, is to be really conscious of the reader that you choose, the person that you choose to have a reading with. That is absolutely 110 percent the most important part of it make sure you have a look at what people have said about them make sure you look at their background make sure you look at what it is that's the first thing second thing absolutely go in with an open mind and have no expectation because if you go in there expecting something you don't get it from the reading then what you're doing is what what basically happens is that you're going well the reader in front of me is not good enough because you're not giving me what i want as a reader we don't have choice in what comes we, we, we actually don't work for the person sitting in front of us. We work for the person who's passed. That's who we work for. So that's our connection. So the person in front of us may not necessarily, um, um, sometimes like when I'm talking to a client, I'll say one of the biggest things here is you may hear something that you don't want to hear because it's spirit telling you it's not you. So be open to that. So they're probably the, the, the biggest key points um, that I could make. The other thing is, is that if you've never experienced a reading, um, the only way that I think you're going to have an understanding of 
how this makes you feel and what it does for you and and if you go to the right reader how it will inspire you and how it will motivate you then you're never going to actually know it if you listen it's like anything i can tell you what an apple tastes like but an actually until you actually bite the apple you're really not going to know understandable yeah, yeah. so I, I think that if and i and i always hope that everybody's first experience with uh, a reader or with mediumship or psychic or somebody who's psychic, um, I hope that it's a first good experience because if it's not, it can it can literally put you off. And I think that that's a big part of uh, society's perception, you know, because there are a lot of people out there that just want to label themselves as that and they don't realise the amount of responsibility that actually comes with doing this work. It's it's You are so responsible when you're sitting in front of somebody. Understandable. I'm also coming from a culture where we don't, quite have a lot of um uh, medical you know personnel so we go through to spirit mediums you know just ask for guidance and things like that so i do understand the impact of what you were told as a kid that this is what is going to happen to your life can actually stay with you so you're right about um you know helping um you know, the, our viewership to know that there is con artists there that are posing as genuine psychics, um, you know, in order to swindle unsuspecting victims of their hard earned money. So Absolutely. that is things that could possibly happen. Well, thank you so much there, Janine, for shedding the light, um, you know, and uh, letting us view and see, um, you know, into what it is that you do. I thought you were going to bring out a crystal ball, but then obviously <laughs> that only happens in the movies, right? Okay. <laughs> so we all have uh, times, you know, um, you know, the audience there is people that are, you know, looking for ways and, and, and ideas on how they can move forward. And sometimes you might just be in a rut and not realize if, you know, what you're doing is what you're actually meant to be doing. Uh, Janine here figured out, you know, just by listening to our intuition and, you know, you know, physically getting out of um, an environment that was not supporting who she has become right now. You know what I mean? So she also has uh, elaborated to us that finding an accurate psychic you know, with real ability is not also an easy task because despite what everybody else tells you, you know, all this clairvoyance and intuition is actually a gift and they don't speak and work for you. They actually work for those that have long gone and passed. So thank you so much for your insight, um, your, you know, your knowledge and your time there, Janine, um, that you shared with us on the show today. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Great stuff. Thank you.